this is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Go. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology, MMA Junkie Radio, commence transmission. <laughs> Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Racing Sportsbook, you are listening to MMA Junkie Radio. Happy New Year, everybody. I am your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes, our East co-host, back east, handling the producing. It's going to be Danny. Soon to join us will be UFC lightweight Kevin Lee. He always be running late, right, guys? Always. That's his thing. That's but it's, just but it's not a lot. It's always like it's like two or three minutes. That's just the style, Junkie Nation. He don't mean nothing by it. Nope. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Happy New Year, Showtime. Showtime from Tennessee, live in studio here with us. He's always talking about, man, I'm going to see you guys shortly. <laughs> I swear he said that about 72 times this year. And only two times that I see him. So he's either avoiding me. He has a long countdown. he hangs countdown. out with you or, yeah, I don't know what goes on. But I honestly, I didn't think we'd see him today. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Showtime. He's got a, a – the thing with Showtime is he has a long countdown. So when he says, I'm going to see you shortly, that could be like in a month. Oh, really? month and a half, yeah. Okay. All but right. he always makes it. This past weekend, we had some events. So we'll cover those. There's going to be some college football going on throughout the day here. Everybody else is off. We're doing our thing. We'll be talking to uh, Kevin Lee, of course. Hopefully he, he may uh, clue us in as to what might be next for him. In 2017, most fighters are always shooting for that 3-0, and maybe that 4-0. Four? and Four. Four. That's right. Uh, so we'll talk to him. We'll also get his thoughts, and we'll share our thoughts on UFC 207, which took place this past weekend, Friday. Also, uh, w- WSOF 34, World Series of Fighting 34, took place on Saturday afternoon. We also had a couple events in Japan, Ryzen 3, with their open weight Grand Prix and then their, what do you call them, goes? Your side shows? Yeah, that's a, yeah, the circus shows, side shows, David and Goliath shows, people we never heard of shows, that stuff. Uh, that stuff went on. Um, love the production, love the history, the Japanese culture, but boy, there's just some awful fighters that take, mm-hmm. that, 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 that go in there and <laughs> it's the middle of the night. You're trying to get your best sleep and you hang in there with them for, uh, a select couple fights, but I just I they, if they want to get to where Pride's at, step on the gas is all I'm saying. Oh yeah, they're way behind that. They're yeah. I mean they're just now you're seeing a few people where you go, all right, this guy could have a little bit of a future or a gal, but you know it's so long in between shows that you forget about who these fighters are. So really, you're tuning in for that one card, and you know most of the time they do deliver. It's a little bit of a long card. But it, it's still fun, and the opening ceremonies are great all the time. Our two guests will come uh, come on in the second hour. The first hour is wide open for you to call in, 866-522-2846. I'll also open up the Facebook if you guys want to chat with us there, if you have any questions. We will be talking UFC 207, I imagine, 90% of the time. We have a new champion and a champion that defended their belt to talk about from UFC 207 as as well as select fights that took place. So let me just go up and down the card right quick. Amanda Nunes defended her world title against Ronda Rousey. She defeated her in the first round, dispatched of her rather quickly. 
And the Rousey comeback, just it never even got started. Nunez is a beast. What can I say about her? I think she's on a five, five, five or six fight win streak now. And it's becoming a trail of destruction. She really, really destroyed Ronda Rousey on Friday night. I think she had one of the best game plans and execution of the game plan right. uh, I've ever seen in a title fight. Yeah. She did. To do I, that I, to a legend, too. Wow. Oh, I know. A and think about it. Before that, Misha Tate, another legend. So now we got to throw her name in that hat, right, for fighter of the year. Mm -hmm. But before all this even started, in my breakdown, I was saying she she doesn't fight the way Holly Holm does. So this is going to be a difficult fight. She did do a lot of things that Holly Holm did in that fight, and I think that's why she was successful. Right. Um, even she had to tone down the killer instinct a little bit because right. there were times where she, she got her hurt. Shots. And you could tell Ronda was, was hoping she could grab a hold of her. Right. And that's where Amanda was smart, and she sat back and just – Took her time and picked her shots. Which is very accurate. Finished her off. Very that, that accurate. Was a great very selective. Very destructive. Congratulations to Amanda Nunez. Now has a title defense, and I think that's huge. It's not only huge to win a world title, but to defend it, to defend it as well. That's what kind of gets your superstardom underway. Mm -hmm. Cody Garbrandt, the new champion at bantamweight, the 135 pound division. He beat longtime champion Dominic Cruz, one of the greatest to ever do it in Dominic Cruz. And did it rather easily, rather handily, I should say. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I knew he had power. I stated on the show that if every time they started a new round or there was a some sort of uh, a firefight and exchange, Garbrandt had a chance because he's got heavy hands. But I just, I, I really thought Cruz would be harder to hit. And I thought Cruz would mix in the wrestling a little bit more. And, and maybe test him there. And then, of course, championship experience, cardio, uh, the moment, you know, the adrenaline dump. None of that happened. Cody Garbrandt was brilliant on Friday night. When, uh, when they were walking to the cage, Dominic Cruz had a look on his face that I've never seen. I he know. had this, like, scowl. Like, I think all that trash talk, all that stuff may have gotten to him mm -hmm. because when he finally got in there, he just – I don't want to say he didn't look right because he did a lot of Dominic Cruz type things, but Cody Dominic Cruz him, and Dominic Cruz already being down in that first round, uh, Cody was letting him come to him, and Dominic just wasn't doing well in that catch up role, right? Of he's used to guys coming to him, he had to go to Cody, and Cody was kind of making him look like a fool. He on was some like of those a exchanges. matador on the exchanges. Yeah. He'd say, "You just missed. Come right back to the center." He was mocking him. He was smack talking him. He was smacking them around. I mean, it, it, it almost looked like like WWE, like they knew the result. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, Cody's like, well, I know I'm going to win. They already told me in the back, so I'm just going to have fun and play it up. I mean, it was incredible. It was amazing what I was watching. And you know, Cruz, I guess, I don't want to say he didn't have an answer because he did try a few different things. But at the same time, whatever, he, whatever game plans he had, A, B, C, one, two, three, Cody Garbrandt was just – he had all the answers. It was – it was a special night. It was a special night of fighting. Uh, a challenger rose to the occasion, became a champ, and I, I believe became a superstar that night. I may be a little bit uh, overboard with the superstar, but I can, I can tell that if he gets a title defense or two under his belt, he is well on his way because it was just a grand moment. Then asking TJ Dillashaw to come get some. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything he did along the way. And then his little buddy Maddox, a leukemia survivor, who inspired him, you know, walking out with him, holding his hand, saying, you're part of this journey. And then at the end, actually giving them, giving them the belt. I'm telling you, man, all that combined is why I'm saying it. Cody Garbrandt, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a perfect night for him. That was a 10, right? A 10 moment. A 10, The yeah. whole thing he put together, uh, the lead up to the fight, the build up. The lead up wasn't a 10. The fight. He you was melting down. I thought he no, was no, melting but, down. But, during but the he week. sold tickets. People were like, I have yes. to watch this fight yes. because those two were going back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I thought Cruz was messing with him, man. I thought Cruz was really, really messing with so him. Too. Almost like that older brother moment, just hand on the forehead. Yeah, I don't know about that. Hand on the forehead, like, come on, yeah, yeah, come on, come on. All right, yeah. Come uh, Friday night, we'll see what's up. And wow. Now, I'll say this about Cruz because it's Garbrandt's moment. It's Garbrandt's time. I still, I, I thought Cruz fought valiantly till the end, accepted defeat like a man answered uh, the media after the fight, mm -hmm. classy in defeat. I, I, I can't say enough of him. He said he had a, a great time in there, and I think he's already began the healing process. 
the grieving process of losing what's precious to him, and that's his little belt. That's his belt. And that's why he has a chance to maybe make this right. Now, the Garbrandt matchup might be one of those where you just can't get that guy. You know what I mean? It may take another type of style matchup to get him. But, he, you know, Garbrandt may not hold the title forever. I don't know. Or maybe they will get the second title. But I thought he did all the correct – he said all the correct things, did all the correct things. And I don't think we've seen the end of Dominic Cruz. That said, he's got a lot of gaps to fill before he can take that title or, yeah, take the title back from Garbrandt. I think he feared the power from Cody. Because, mm, he felt uh, it early. If you look at a lot of Dominic shots, he was throwing them off his back leg mm. and he was kind of whiffing he was, or he was just missing. And I think it's because he didn't want to commit because he was he getting He was frustrated. Off. When Garbrandt made a miss, not only did he make a miss with head movement or footwork, he also, I believe, frustrated him, almost clowned him as if to say, mm. you really think that was going to get me? Because he stood there, invited him back in. I'm telling you, dude, I couldn't believe what, what was happening. That's what I want to see it again. Because I kept thinking, Garbrandt, rounds one and two were somewhat close. I saw some 10-9s the other way. I was scoring it a different way. But you don't want to, like, I mean, there was a chance where he could have capitalized and finished him. Instead, he was like, no, let's keep the show going. Again, like a guy who almost knew what the result was. And in that fifth round, I was thinking, what if they did call some earlier rounds for Cruz? You may, you may be clowning here. Yeah. This may come back to bite you. But it didn't. It was his night. It was amazing. I guess the only way he could have topped it was an actual finish. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Car Cody Garbrandt, your new champion. Scores a 48-46 two times and a 48-47 one time. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Cody Garbrandt, your new world champion. TJ Dillashaw earlier that night defeated John Lineker. 30-26 is across the board. That sounds boring. Times were boring during the fight. But what did we all say leading up to it? Don't engage Lineker. Don't fight his fight. Fight your fight. If you do, you have more skills, and that'll show, and it did. And now he could be next for Garbrandt. Although Garbrandt, after he told TJ Dillashaw to come get some, he also invited Cruz for a rematch. So we don't know how that'll play out. Cruz also said it is Dillashaw's shot. shot sorry. So I don't know. I, I guess this is really one where... UFC will huddle up and just figure it out. But I think it'll be Dillashaw. I think, I think Cruz, it has to be. I think Cruz is smart. I think Cruz is – he also knows some gaps need to be filled. So he'll take someone else on, beat that someone else, hopefully, in his eyes, and then get to Garbrandt and Dillashaw. Who knows? Maybe Dillashaw may do his dirty work. Cruz has the win over Dillashaw. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'd be more confident facing Dillashaw. That's how cerebral I think Dominic Cruz is. Not to say he's scared of Garbrandt. I'm just saying he's a smart fighter. Smart fighters realize – what they need to do. I think TJ was pretty cerebral in the fact that he used the whole MMA AA angle where if you don't give me my shot, Something's rigged. it's because of that. Yeah. I thought that was pretty that smart. That can work either way. You know, somebody can go, somebody with power can go, yeah, maybe it is. You figure it out. We're giving it to Cruz. Mm -hmm. Or maybe can, someone can say, hey, 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 we can't, you know, this guy's got the world by the nuts. Uh, he does right now. I think right. he does. Yeah, maybe. Dong Hyun Kim defeated Tarek Safadine. Split decision there. Ray Borg, a guest of ours today uh, in the second hour, defeated Louis Smolka. Dominated Louis Smolka. 230-26 is there. Neil Magny defeated Johnny Hendricks. Lots of boos, lots of uh, questions regarding that decision. You guys know I'm a Johnny Hendricks homer, but I honestly knew that when they announced the fight, there was a possibility they could give it to Neil Magny, it's that feeling you have in your stomach that it could go the other way. I don't scream robbery, even though I thought Hendricks won. But again, if you do not clearly win rounds, you set yourself up for that. Yeah. It's as I, simple I as that. I couldn't have said it better. I yeah. felt exactly the same way. You have to win rounds convincingly. Antonio Carlos Jr., a.k.a. Shoe Face, defeated Marvin Vittori. A so, uh, little gutted for that because Vittori was here in studio with us, and I really liked the guy. I don't know. Shoe Face doesn't seem like a bad guy to me. But uh, I, I guess I was pulling a little bit for Vittori. Alex Garcia defeated longtime Junkie Radio favorite Mike Pyle. Pyle's in his 40s. I don't know if that's his last fight. It, it, you know, the ending was not a proper uh, exit. But, God, he's given so much to the sport. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up with him, see how his health is. But Garcia just too young, too strong. Vicious, vicious, vicious uh, KO there. Nico Price defeated Brandon Thatch. Wow, man, the Thatch career, uh, a guy that was so promising. This is a guy that I believe he came through with LaFleur, Gastelum, and Gunnar Nelson as four bright prospects at welterweight. And look at how the other guys are doing well for themselves. And this guy just, he's 
he's probably done in the UFC. He'll have to go to the regional to circus, circuit, circus, circuit, and uh, retool, refuel, come back. Tim Means defeated Alex Oliveira. Or, sorry, no contest in that uh, matchup. It was looking good for him there for a while towards the end, but uh, they ruled it an accidental knee. Tim Means intentionally delivered the knee. However, he didn't know it was illegal. Correct? Correct. Right. But it was illegal. Mm-hmm. That could have very well been a disqualification. In Which fact, I it think should it have be. been a disqualification. Those who bet Means got, got away with one there. Not illegally or grimy or anything, but that's really what that call could have been. It doesn't make Tim Means a bad guy. I appreciate his honesty. That rule has been around for a while. And go, starting this year, actually, the game will be a little bit different. It didn't involve the game, the, you know, the three-point stance, the four-point stance. It didn't involve that. It involved a knee actually touching the ground. Therefore, he was a grounded opponent. We can get into more of that later. Over at WSOF, which had four world title fights, uh, Justin Gagey defeated Luis Firmino. John Fitch, uh, so he held on to his title. John Fitch held on to his title versus Jake Shields. Marlon Marais defeated Jose Naldo Silva. Uh, Verbal submission, there was an injury involved in that one. Dave Branch submitted Lewis Taylor. Uh, Junkie Radio favorite, Jared Rochelle, unfortunately, got a loss. Smilio Rama got a win. Shane Crutchin got a win. Andre Harrison got a win. Solid names there. All right, so let's get to some phone calls. And remember, this first hour is uh, all about you. It's wide open. When we hang up on someone, that means the line's clear, 866-522-2846. I'm just going to get right into it right now. Ladies first, Kim in Las Vegas. What's up, Kim? I like that stuff. Last time she'd be going to the regional circus and be Ronda Rousey because, you know, Mama knows best. And when Mama decided that Travis Brown was a terrible boyfriend, uh, listen to Mom because if Mom's not in your corner, well, you just fucked up. And uh, she needs to get rid of that coach. But I think the best thing she could do is just retire and maybe go into WWE and acting. But someone tells me Ronda Rousey is not good with losing. So even WWE might be wrong for her because she might throw a hissy fit if she has to lose. And my second comment has to go with uh, Cody and Cruz. Even though, hey, I was down for Cody you know, winning. He did a beautiful job, but he knocked him down so many times. I wondered if he was shocked if he knocked him down because I was like, could you pounce at some point and knock this motherfucker down? Please pounce because that'd be an amazing way to get the title. But, you know, impressive uh, outing for Cody, but holy shit, how many times can you knock a homie down before you just jump on him and start beating his fucking face in? And that's all I got for today. Kim. And lastly, fuck you, goes. Hey, Kim. Fuck your team, too. Kim, I got a question for you. Um, yes. Did Rhonda's mom officially say she doesn't like Travis Brown? I'm I'm kind of on board with everything you've said. I know she's had disdain for the coach, but I've never known that she had a problem with Travis Brown. Where'd you hear that? Well, you can just tell. I know she didn't like the coach, but it doesn't seem like she's ever liked Travis Brown. You know, I don't think she likes the situation that Rhonda's in. I can just tell that the whole surrounding of everything. And you would think a good boyfriend is going to be like, okay, if your mom is not in this, then we might need to, you know, figure out what the hell is going wrong. And, uh, you know, her mom's been, like, her anchor. I mean, her life has sucked for a super long time, thanks mm-hmm. to all the stuff that's going on in her life. And if your mom is your anchor and your boyfriend is any damn good, he's going to have to figure out something. I understand that her mom is a Jutica and not an MMA, but a good boyfriend is going to see, especially after you lost, um, after such a win streak that, you might need to change something up. Mom always knows best, and a good boyfriend is going to say, there's something missing in your life. Maybe we should see what, what the hell's going wrong, bring your mom back around. But with that shitty-ass coach around, fuck that coach. That's all, right. all I got. All right, thanks, Kim. Good thing I asked her that question that she elected not to answer. Rhonda's mom has she, not said that, right? She's just saying that she has that feeling. Yeah, well, but at first she said it almost like a fact. And I thought it was interesting because that's huge. Travis Brown's a big name in the sport. Her mom's very influential in her career, but I've never heard that. I only saw a two-minute conversation with TMZ Sports. The mom said, I think she should retire. She elected not to answer anything regarding Edmund, but her body, uh, you know, her her face, her her body language read like, yeah, I don't like that. I don't want to get into that. But uh, I've never heard her say she's got a problem with Travis Brown. I haven't either. Yeah. So anyway, I was curious about it, and and uh, but I don't think Kim really had any facts around that part. But I appreciate her call. All right, Proteus in Ontario, Canada. What's up? 
Jason, and uh, Happy New Year to you. You too, Same man. Team. Thank you, thank you, and Happy New Year, Showtime. I know you're in the uh, in the studio, brother. Thanks. Happy New Year. Thanks, fool. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about Rousey as well. Um, just a you know, shadow of herself uh, came out to the Octagon Friday night, and, uh, you know, how the mighty have fallen. I mean, she was on top of the game, and it just kind of proves that MMA is progressing so fast. I mean, the women's division has not been around for long. Look how many times it's, the belt has changed hands since Rousey held it. And Amanda... Wow. Amanda is looking tough at the top, guys. Um, I don't know if she's going to hang on to it for a long period of time, but it's it's really uh, interesting to see how Ronda just has faded away and, and the whole taking a year off and then not wanting to speak to anybody, any of the media, and the way she was storming off just didn't it didn't look good, man. It didn't look good. We talked about this on Friday, but amazing performance by Amanda Noon. It was. It was an incredible performance by Amanda Nunez. As far as Rousey's concerned, I just don't know what clicks in. You know what clicks upstairs. Uh, I, 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 I think that fall from grace. Look, man. You know what? It's as simple as this. Ronda Rousey, trailblazer, outstanding champion. Incredible what she did for the sport. For not just for women's MMA, for the sport. And I believe it's as simple as this goes. I really believe a lot of people love Ronda Rousey. All right. And I believe that she's done a lot of great things. But along the way, she has been douchey at times <laughs> to people. Say. And those people, I think it was their only chance where they could ha-ha her back mm -hmm. when she lost to Holly Holm. So I know Rhonda's bitter that people have kind of had that. But the media's job is to describe what happened. So that's why words with destruction and implosion and, and whatever, ownage. That's what took place in Australia. The fans, of course, uh, there's just a legion of fans that are always going to scream your way either way, but you got to accept the good with the bad. But I think she's really hurt by what how people acted towards her, but she has to understand she also has had her fair share of those moments towards others, and that's why it was a goes-around, comes-around, or a karma thing. And you know what I mean? But I don't things. think anyone just picked her name out of a hat and said, let's just give it to her. It's because stuff has also gone down during her time where she's reigned as a queen, you know? Yeah. And, and, I, and Rhonda's mom's right about one thing. Rhonda's very smart. That's why I don't understand why she can't see that. <sighs> Everybody has that moment where they go, God, I've been an asshole this whole time. Or how could I have been like that, you know? But somehow, I, I, don't, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but it's little moments, like not shaking Misha's hand afterwards. Right. Like stuff like that comes around, and it's coming around. You right. know? It's but coming around. You have simple to expect that. that. But you know what? If Rhonda, I mean, I wish she would really, really, even if she just talked to Joe Rogan in this last fight. The last one, she couldn't. She was jacked up. In this one, she stood there. I think she could have. You, 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 she would see the round of applause that she would get from people and, and the love and admiration they would show for her. And I think it would really, really help her. This whole thing just being anti-everything, I don't get it, man. And she really, she really, really needs some help there. If you look at women's MMA Thanks, Brody, okay, so and the start of it, it's not that much different than men's MMA, all right? We'll take the, the UFC early on. Who was the dominant guy? Hoist Gracie, right? But what happened? After a while, the rest of the crop caught up. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's going on here. And it's not—I'm not saying that Ron is a one-trick pony or anything. She's a great fighter. It's just the rest of that division caught up to her. Right, and now and I'm again, not so sure she can do she's that. She's an anymore. intelligent young lady. She has to be able to see that if you review the last six, seven minutes of the home fight and this fight, her skills just aren't there to beat some of these more athletic girls. And she needs to address that because her coach isn't addressing it. I will say this. There's audio of Edmund and the things that he's saying, and people are quick, quick to jump on that guy. And I'm not really his biggest fan. Um, I mean, he he was there when she won. You got to give him that credit too. A lot of it had to do with she's just outstanding. Maybe you could have done it. Maybe Showtime could have done it. I don't know. But he was there, and you got to give him, you gotta give him that. But whatever he was yelling, it all happened so quick that I don't know that that was bad instruction either. You know what I mean? There's just head movement. Tell them to move their head. Right, head movement. And then when things weren't going right, he she needed to clinch. She needed to get her wits back about her. So, uh, MMA MMA fans are just they're ruthless. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Uh, Chasm, I think this is Chasm from Toronto. What's up, man? 
Hey guys, uh, I would like to start by wishing you and the listeners of the show a happy new year with the hope that you will have many blessings in the year to come. You too, sir. Same to you. Thank you. Well, man, 2016 was an amazing year in MMA. Uh, on personal note, this year I was lucky to watch two possible fight of the year candidates, uh, Balsa versus O'Connell and Choi versus uh, Cub Live in person. I can't wait to see what 2017 has in store for us. And uh, on real quick, uh, on the run of Rousey versus Amanda Nunes. Wow, man. Uh, as soon as she, uh, Amanda hit her with the first punch, it's like R- R- uh, Ronda just had flashbacks from uh, yes. uh, from her last fight against Holly Holm. Correct. And she just froze. And uh, lucky for her, Herb Dean stopped the fight after she got punched another four times or else this could have got ugly, man. Man, I want to give I Amanda, I, I talked about her game plan and everything she did physically was incredible. But how about her mental game? Because no matter what, exactly. when Ronda came out of that tunnel with that scowl on her face and she looked good, Lean, there's got to be yeah. a point where you go, shit, that's Ronda Rousey. Right. She's been tearing people up. Yeah. But Ma- Amanda kept all of her emotions in check. And it was just, it, 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 honestly, it's one of the best performances I've ever seen in that Chasm was right, too, because when she got hit initially, you you already could see some redness around her mouth and her nose and this look like she was already shook. And that look was already taking her to 2015, Australia, a confused look. A, this isn't supposed to go down like this look. You know what I mean? It all went away quickly because prior to that, her walkout, her intensity, her confidence, I thought it was really all there. And it all went away with, with that first set of combos. And then after that, as she tried to reset, if you really, really study it, she really is trying to keep her hands up and not take some of those shots. There's also a sequence where I thought Amanda landed more than she didn't, and she didn't, but she was still kind of in there uh, deflecting a couple shots. But it wasn't enough because there wasn't offense coming back towards her in any way. And that's why I've always said that I felt what she really should be working on is double legs, wrestling, clinching, Somehow getting the fight to the ground other than just the judo hip tosses that she does, that she's very exceptional at. Damian Maya, who is a decorated Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, all he did was immerse himself in wrestling for two years, all right? And that's why now he's actually one of the better wrestlers. He's actually better than some guys that have wrestled all their lives. I think, I really think Ronda can still do it if she commits herself to it. She's got the body composition for it, the athleticism for it. It's going to take some time, but... If she wants to maximize the vicious ground game that she has, she's got to get it to the ground, and that's just one way to do it, wrestling. And, and I don't think – and now circling back to Edmund, he's not going to be able to help her with it. I think Misha made good points in the on the Fox panel. She just said, man, that girl hits hard. That's another thing, yeah. And I, I think Ronda wasn't expecting how hard Amanda hits. Chasm, man, thanks for calling in, brother. You got anything else to say? It's been a while. I, 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 you always contribute to the show on social media. You got anything else before we let you go? Yes, sir. I just want to say one more thing. Uh, that uh, Amanda Nunes finally we have a champion who speaks perfect English. You also should run with her. Like uh, her post-fight speech was very good. I, I don't remember exactly what she said, but she's something like, "Rana should retire now. I'm the champion." Like this is great. I just wanted to add that. Thank you guys okay. for taking my call. See you, buddy. And the best. Happy New Year. Well, I will say, she does speak good English. I think once she gets excited and gets going. There's a few times where I, I'm kind of lost with what she's trying to say. So she just needs to be a little bit more methodical, take, take a deep breath, and say what she's got to say. I think I get what the message was as well. But along the way, as she's screaming and there's booze coming in, you kind of get lost. Stump stuff, I think, got lost in translation. And then the booze came in a little heavier because I think people started treating it as she's being disrespectful to a likable gal in Ronda Rousey. All right, let's go to Nick in Vancouver. What's up, Nick? Holy shit, here we go, guys. Brand new year, man. Fuck, here we go. It was an interesting night, all the way from the Tim Means shit, man. Like the uh, Ratner and Rogan were trying to figure out the rules. We are all confused, man. I, then I forgot what I forgot even what the rules were. The Johnny Hendricks and just a shadow of himself. It's sad to see. You know, I mean, you can fight guys 10 to 20, but this is a guy like three years ago went to went the distance with GSP and Robbie Lawler, man. It just, it just goes to show you. You just leave a part of your soul in there. It's just not the same. And the co-main event, but I'm, you know, you know what I love most about that fight is I love it when guys fucking do what the other guy does. Oh yeah, you know, a dancer. I love it when fucking guys do that shit to each other, man. You know, it just it, it brings you in, it gets you out of your seat. And the uh, and finally the main event, man, that was embarrassing to watch. Is uh, for me that was, it was hard to watch. 
remind me of like when Anderson Silva destroyed Lieben, when fucking Connor like uh, destroyed that Brimage guy, and you know Frankie in the third fight with BJ Penn. It just goes to show like you, you just can't do it anymore. There's just people that get better than you. And, uh, and I was watching the fight with the, one of the kids in the house here, and he was like, "Why, why doesn't she block?" Right? Like, when you're getting that from a kid, like just the the the, the level of striking, man. And and I I, I didn't dislike or, or like Amanda Nunes, but I'm a fan now. And mostly just from the press conference, which you said later, I, I love it when God, you know when 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 fighters just uh, speak their mind and, and tell you how it is, and, and you know and they don't get discouraged. I mean, she just spoke her mind. I, I love that shit. So I, I'm a big fan of hers now. So other than that, man, that's it, guys. Have a great show. All right, thank you, sir. Happy New Year. I know exactly what he's talking about. I like those type of fights too. And if you, one of my favorite ones is in boxing, if you go back and you watch Prince Nassim Hamed versus Antonio Marco Antonio Barrera, right. The lead up to all that was all about how Barrera's, you know, trying to try and knock out, drag him out type fight, slugging this and that, and he came out and he boxed Prince Nazim, and Prince Nazim had no answer for it. it. Was I love when that happens? Let's go to Marco and Waco. What's up, Marco? Marco from Waco. What happened to you, Batos? You two homes. Okay, so the keep re- recap of, uh, of the, what happened. The fight, TJD show, you know, he looked fantastic against Lineker. You know, you know then calling out his shot. It's strange for him because he's not a guy that usually calls his shot. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, man, I mean, all before the fight, I think this guy's a major and a hothead. And then he's the, the, the epitome of composure on the fight and, and show mastery that uh, we didn't know he got because he was knocking people out on the first round every single time. Now I see that this guy's a complete package. So much respect for Cody. We got a nice little triangle going on in Bantaway with Cruz, Dillard, show him. So the Bantaway division is a good place. On the main event, man, uh, a little bit of perspective. You know, you know, my wife is a huge Ronda Rousey fan, and she was teary-eyed when she saw the, the event result. It was sad to see, man. A little bit disappointed with some fans. You know, they got the right to say whatever they, they, they want to say, but it's a little bit disgusting. not sure Ronda, a little bit of respect for what she had done for the sport. Uh, Amanda, what can I say, man? She, she's a, she looks really good. I still think she's a first-round fighter. Because I can pick three girls right out of the top of my head that probably could beat her. One of them is Katsin Gano, Valentina Chechenko, and Holly Holm. Those are the matches that I'm interested to see with Amanda. If she can go to those three, three girls, man, she can take off anybody on the division and probably run for a long time. We'll let you guys catch you next time. See you, Marco. All right, we are going to take a break here. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Series 6 7 Rush 93. I will tell you this. I, I was a little disappointed in the champ. And Chris Cyborg also piling on on Ronda. Uh, I think Ronda and Chris are beyond, like, what they had. You know what I mean? They both experienced some sort of setback since then. And uh, I, I don't know, man. I, uh, m- maybe. Has Ronda been, has, been, has Ronda been clowning things, uh, uh, Chris, though? In the past, in the, like, in the last year. Stuff. In the no, last year. In the last year, she's taken it. Okay. Up. Um, so maybe maybe there, but I just didn't see a reason for Amanda to have to do the stroller with Rhonda there. You know what was that like? Just I'm your I'm your daddy, except I'm your mommy, or what? I don't know. I didn't get that. I, you just finished blasting her in the octagon, paid her a lot of respect, and everybody's gonna pay you a lot of respect. But I just didn't understand I that thought, part. I thought it, well, I thought I took it as you know she was saying having babies or whatever, like go have go have a baby now or something. I don't know. I don't know. If she showed me that, hey, you think I should press in? I'd probably go nah. You kind of already. Clounder. Leading up to, I get it. Afterwards, I think there's certain type of smack talk, but I don't think Ronda was vicious towards her. Was she? Well, well, leading up to? I will say this, and a lot of fighters take this to heart, but no touching gloves, that pisses off a lot of people. But, right, but she kind of gave her the old, um... But she, she does g- that to she, almost She everyone. gave her the no, like, as in to say, the fight started, like, w- w- I'm just not into that. I, I gotta, I, I have a certain little mission here. It was a little different than not giving uh, Misha the handshake afterwards. I thought that was, like, you know, bad. But anyway, we'll discuss it when we come back. 866-522-2846. Call in. Participate. We'll be right back.
They pat down TSA agents because they don't know where those people have been and because they can. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Chunky Radio. Sirius XM honors the late George Michael with his own dedicated channel, Faith, the George Michael Tribute Channel. Here is his entire body of work from his earliest recordings with Wham! through his solo career and collaborations. Faith, the George Michael Tribute Channel starts January 4th at noon Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 13 and on the Sirius XM app. Also, I do want to say we've hinted towards this a uh, little bit last week. I don't know that we really dove into it. It's disappointing news from our end, but it's nothing that will uh, end our run as a radio show. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we will not be live on Sirius as of tomorrow morning. So this is our last show that where we'll be live on Sirius. Uh, Barstool Sports is coming in during our time slot. I believe Covino and Rich are starting a little bit earlier as well to accommodate the show. All I can say is support that show the way you supported us. Give them a chance. Uh, they, you know, Somebody gave us a chance. And uh, we hope to be back live on Sirius at some point. What Sirius has done for us, though, is we will be on demand still um, from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time. So the live show will be on demand and ready for you to pull down, download, whatever you call it, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, Mondays through Fridays. And you can hear the replay on East Coast Drive Time the following day from 7 to 9 in the morning Eastern, uh, Eastern Time. The Friday show that we produce will be available Saturday morning, 6 to 8 in the morning Eastern, Eastern Time. So you'll hear us from time to time. It won't be live, unfortunately, but we will be... Uh, you know, on a replay, it will be on demand. And, of course, if you want to listen to the show, you can catch us on Facebook.com forward slash official MMA Junkie or YouTube.com forward slash MMA Junkie Video. Thanks to Sirius for giving us that chance to do live radio. We enjoyed it. And we're still part of Sirius XM Rush 93. And, like I said, it ain't stopping for us. We've had many uh, ups and downs goes. Remember when we were on Fight Now TV? Yeah. We were on Ustream. We've been on their front page, um, you know. So we've kind of, kind of been through this uh, stuff like this before. It happens. Um, we're going to continue busting out our show two hours a day, Monday through Friday. And if you're ever in Vegas, come by and pay us a visit here. Listen to the show live. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything you want to say, Ghost? These things happen in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just want to stay uh, mum about it, huh? Well, there's not much to say. I hear you. Okay. So we're going to continue on here with the show. One more time, if you do want to catch the show live, if you don't want to wait till 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time, I get it. News travels fast. So go to Facebook.com forward slash official MMA Junkie or YouTube.com forward slash MMA Junkie video. Speaking of Facebook, let me read you some stuff here. Gavin McCarran says, could you imagine – what Cyborg versus Ronda would have looked like. Well, yeah. Cyborg does have the home and Nunez type of uh, offense. Straight punches. Yeah, uh, you know, that, that that she's a striker, right? Straight punches, bigger. So, yeah, that it, it may have been bad. Yeah, you're right, Gavin. We don't know. That's why the fight plays out. Um, Robert Rodriguez says, the funniest part of it all was the push for hashtag fear the return. Uh, people were ruthless on Twitter. You know, she she put all her chips in on that return. So I think part of it was to mount, you know, the hashtags. And I think you have to do that and face the consequences if it doesn't go good. I think if you go in with any sort of trepidation, I just don't think you maximize what you are. And that's a superstar, you know, because right. at that point, if, if at that point, I guess it's a lack of confidence if you don't have your hashtags or your, uh, you know, the the meaning of what your camp is all about, you know, and, and but I, don't, yeah. Don't you think the team probably should have got together, her family members, and just said, look, this didn't go well for you the first time. Maybe stay off social media for this one, right? Don't don't go on there and look at all the horrible things that have been said. That's mm. just going to put you in more of I a I don't know that she has, has she? Well, I'm just saying, like, all the stuff that's right. been, you know, I don't think she looks, I would imagine she, she said She said him. about a year ago that it's been, two or three years where she's even looked at social media. Well, I think people say that, but I think they still do it. I think she's posted. And, yeah, you're right. Because otherwise, how would she know that everybody's yeah. been so cruel to her? Yeah. She's probably not uh, immersed in it, though. 
Kim, Las Vegas Kim says he shakes his opponents, LOL, by punching them in the head. What's she talking about? I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, shout out on Facebook to uh, Jeff Helstein. Edmund is a loser. The worst trainer in the UFC. He would be nowhere without her using her judo for the first or first ten fights. Uh, and then mentally fucking her to think she's a boxer. You uh, you said it in a different way that in how I would have said it, Jeff. I you know in his mind he thought he could use this athlete, was well conditioned athlete, and teach her how to box. Teach her how to strike. She did end a couple fights with her striking. It's just that what I think where I think Edmund was a little stubborn was. Okay, you did that against Alexis Davis and Betch Cohea, but I think these other strikers are way more refined. Now let's go back to some grappling. You know what I mean? He didn't mm -hmm. he didn't maximize her strengths to their weaknesses. I think he was stubborn and thinking, I'm teaching you to box. I'm teaching you to box. You can outbox anybody. You can be a world champion. You can be Floyd. You can be a, a boxing world champion. You can beat Cain Velasquez. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. You were able to beat some. Take it easy now. Let's, let's work on some wrestling. Uh, the same way you dove into boxing, dive into wrestling. He failed to do that. I think that's where he failed her. Hey, but don't forget, like, sometimes fighters don't listen, too, right? Mm -hmm. It could be some of that. But I think when people criticize Edmund, I don't think it's all Ronda Rousey criticism. I think it's the fact that some other fighters have maybe gone to that camp and, and not lost. done well as well. Right. So I don't think it's all Ronda, but um, I think it's just kind of across the board that people don't like him. Yeah. Uh, Thembi Simal Reeves says Amanda is going to have the belt for a long time. Uh, and a few others on Facebook. Dave Doble says, home would destroy Amanda. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, me neither. I don't know about that. I think... I think there's paths to victory. I think if Dave were to say, home might beat, it, home might beat Amanda, I feel home will beat Amanda, then I can say, okay, yeah, home's legit. But destroy Amanda? I don't think so. I don't think so either. The thing about Amanda is... Uh, She's still getting better. Yeah. You know, she hasn't even peaked yet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll get back to some Facebook uh, comments in just a bit. Let's get back to the phone calls. 866-522-2846. We'll, uh, we'll be talking to Ray Borg in the second hour and Justin Buckholtz. Borg defeated Lewis Smoke at UFC 207. Buckholtz, the head coach over at Team Alpha Male. This is his first UFC world champion. Uh, he's worked hard at it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure to get over that cruise hump. Twice as sweet, not only to get a world champion, but for that camp to finally be Cruz, that was a that was a big one for the, for those guys in Sacramento. Mitch in Fort uh, Fort Lauderdale, how you doing, buddy? What's up, fellas? Shout out to Showtime and Happy New Year. You too, buddy. Happy New Year. All right, man. Hey, uh, quick take on the weekend's title fights, man. Um, as far as Rousey goes, uh, the pattern that has become painfully obvious is that in her supposedly clearing out the 135 division and retiring undefeated. See, it's, it's the top-level strikers, you know, Hong Nunez, maybe Pena, Shevchenko, they're just not going to allow her to walk in there, snuggle up, judo throw them, and overpower them on the ground. So to George's point, her stand-up seems so, you know, such a wide gap, both offensively and defensively, that I'm not sure she even tries to come back. And I personally would recommend she just, you know, take her legacy and move on. As far as the second fight, George, you're not off about Garbrandt being a superstar, but we're going to see how that goes. But personally, I thought he was going to do something like the other high-level boxers do, Miocic, Dos Santos maybe. Get Dominic's timing down, figure out a way to cut off the octagon and then knock him out. Mm -hmm. And here's what I'm talking about. When I think of Garbrandt's punches, I think of them like all those kicks. If they catch you flush with the first one, they won't necessarily knock you out or immobilize you. But if they catch you with a third, fourth, or fifth one flush, you're either knocked out, seeing stars, or you just can't implement your game plan. So props to Dominic for surviving five rounds. And in as much as he could win the rematch against Garbrandt, Garbrandt, like Marco was saying, that dude showed us that he is more skilled and more cardio fit than I certainly knew he was. Right. So, uh, yeah, and... um. If anyone, including Dominic, can avoid that handful of haymakers that you know are coming, more power to them. But in closing, it seems to me that the, the, the two 135-pound champions just sent a message. 
that they will not likely defeat themselves, and you guys had better come with your A-plus, no mistakes allowed game, or it, it's going to be a, a, a quick night. Good call, Mitch. Thank you very That's much for calling take. in. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I right. think with uh, Garbrandt goes, every time he put Gr Cruz down, I think he was being – I don't know if we want to credit him and say he was being cerebral because he wanted to extend the pain over 25 minutes. I think that might be an answer towards how Cody might feel about his ground game. You know, it could be that his ground game just isn't there. He's a wrestler too, but that doesn't mean he's a great grappler. And do you remember when Chael Sonnen got caught at the end? Uh, versus Anderson Silva, maybe maybe he just felt like, no, 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 I'm winning this, come back up. But in the process, he kept clowning. So I don't know. I, I, I think he's going to continue to grow. He's still a young guy. Um, but I, I will say this. These were the scorecards from that fight, all right? Uh, in round one goes, Garbrandt got a 10-9 from one judge. But did you know that two judges scored it for Cruz? No. Well, yeah. I, it doesn't surprise me, though. Because that's kind of what I saw on social media. Some people were giving it to Cruz. And I think there's and ways I you can watch it and give it to him. Oh, yeah. And I thought there was way more Garbrandts than Cruz's. Now, in round two, the first judge who gave round one to Garbrandt gave that round to uh, Cruz. However, I'll put it to you like this. Cody Garbrandt got, uh, let me see, a 9-10. So he lost on one judge's scorecard, on two judges' scorecards. And one judge gave it to Dominic Cruz. So it's going to be a little confusing. But in both rounds, two judges called it for Cruz and one judge for Cody Garbrandt. But when you tally the scores, it was 19-19, 19-19, and 20-10 Cruz going into the third. So going into the third, if it was a three-round fight, there was no way Garbrandt could win unless we mm -hmm. get into 10-8s and all that. But – the third round would have been up for grabs. Anyway, this is how the third round went down. It was 10-9 across the board for Garbrandt. In round four, it was 10-9 ac across the board for Garbrandt. So going into the fifth, one judge had it 39 to 36, it looks like. Another judge had it 39 to 36 as well. The last judge had it all tied up going into the, to the last round and that's why i remember you and i were talking we we're like hey garbrandt can't just cruise either mm -hmm. no pun intended he's got to go after this this is his moment um he did wind up winning the round but let's say somebody gave that to cruise and let's say they only gave out 10 nines he could have been susceptible to a 10 8 in which again you would have had to draw on no belt so i i just wish that as much as he did, as great as he was, if he just would have stepped on his neck a little bit more and said, take Damn. that. You know what I mean? Because you have to, man. It's all at stake right here. Tyron Woodley almost, uh, you know, he, he kind of cruised towards the end of his fight. And that almost cost him. Ask him how great it feels to wake up and be a world champion. Yeah. No, I hear you. I, I, I want to give uh, Eric Del Fiero a little bit of props because – in their corner, he was stressing, you need to finish this guy. You need to come. He was, I thought he was giving him a lot of good mental tips, but uh, it just wasn't Dom's night, man. Cody mm. was on point. That was a 10 performance. I'll give you that. Let's go to Rick in Alaska. What's up, Rick? Hey, I'm calling about the most satisfying night out of the weekend. Of course, I'm talking about Jared Rochelle. I know uh, I'm alone on this, but I personally thought that was a tremendous knockout. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, I wanted to talk about your argument with Stipe that you did last week. Do you think Noon's winning this way kind of changes that? One more time? Do you think the uh, argument you had for Stipe being the fire there, mm -hmm. do you think Noon? Right. Against, does uh, does Garbrandt winning change it, or does Nunez winning change it? Yeah. I mean, I think right. Nunez winning kind of does. No. Shake that CPA argument up a little bit. No. It does get her closer. It gets her close. I think she becomes the number two because she went 3-0. and She captured a world title. She defended a world title, except she finished two of her opponents. Stipe finished all three. But the two that she finished go down as MMA legends. Right. Well, the others aren't shabby and either. She them. may have retired them both. The, no, well, she didn't retire Misha yeah. Tate. Raquel Pennington retired well, Misha yeah. Tate. Well, yeah. So, um, again, we're splitting hairs here. I'm not saying nobody sucks. Garbrandt, however, 4-0. That one kind of snuck up on me. He hasn't defended the title, but he captured the world title and beat an all-time great in the process. So, I don't know, man. I, I once again think, I just think Stipe is clear 
all first round KOs, all against future Hall of Famers, all that stuff. Rick, we got to move on, man. Thanks for calling in, all right, buddy? Thanks, buddy. You're all right. right. See ya. Serious XM audience, thanks for all your support and love. Uh, catch us on the replays, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. And the next day, catch us 7 to 9 Eastern on the replays. And, of course, Facebook.com forward slash official MMA Junkie every day. And uh, we'll see you on the other side.
Right, here we go with the second hour of the MMA Junkie Radio Show. On Facebook, we have a couple people clashing, guys. Dave Double tells Thembi, Simon Reeves, he says, Thembi, I would love to smash you in the gym. Easy. All right, harmless, right? Mm-hmm. Just basically gets to the point. Thembi says, I can't stand these guys who are greener than gym groupies. Dave replies, Thembi is a stay-behind-the-computer nerd. <laughs> Thembi invites him out to uh, Portland, Oregon. Says uh, he's at a live MMA, right? But, but this is the one that caught me. He says, yeah, Dave, anytime. Better update your will. <laughs> and, of course, I'm, I'm uh, picturing Dave Doble. All right, I'm ahead up to Portland, but in case, <laughs> case he's a beast. Here's my I will. Sure I updated my assets it. Are up to yeah, date. I just want to make sure my will, my assets are up to date and everything's good to go. But I am going to go up to Portland and, and uh, challenge this this gentleman. <laughs> oh, man, you guys cracked me up on the Facebook chat. All right, let's talk to Alex from Maryland up first, 866-522-2846. Justin Gagey, by the way, was down in his fight two rounds to one before it ended uh, because of a doctor stoppage. <laughs> At least from Mino's eye, he just couldn't open it. It was it didn't exist. Yeah, it was really closed and puffing up. It just looked like it could be bad news. They can run it back. I think Firmino earned that. Um, Gagey, however, is, I believe, a non- uh Well, geez, I'm using football terms. A, rest- uh, a free agent coming up soon. So if they do run it back, it's got to be quick because I think February, I hear, is when he becomes a free agent. Uh, Marlon Marais, unfortunate how that fight ended. We're talking about how Bantamweights is looking nice with Garbrandt and Cruz and Dillashaw. And I'd love to add Fernandez from 1FC. He tried it before, but apparently they take care of him out at 1FC. One championship they're called now. But Marias, I'd love to see him in the UFC as his, if his contract's up. I can't remember, but I, I think, think it'll happen. two of the three of the champions might have contracts coming up. And John Fitch may have retired on Saturday as well. Yeah. So, fr- yeah, Saturday. He's got to check, I guess, nerve damage, neck Injuries, he's not the same. Uh, title defense versus Jake Shields, big for him. He won four rounds to one on most judges' scorecards or all of the judges' scorecards. And, of course, David Branch is doing his thing as a 205er, as an 85er, staying busy, going back and forth. He's handling his business. So huge for all those guys. Uh, as stated earlier, we'll start off with Alex from Maryland. And if you want to join the party, it's 866-522-2846. What's up, Alex? How you doing? Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking my call and Happy New Year. You too. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, bring up Nunez in, uh, in the context of, um, so let me just say this, Styles makes fights and her, her performance against Ronda Rousey was very impressive. Um, however, I wanted to get your guys' take on how you think she would fare against Holly Holm. And I know that Holly Holm you know, lost to Shevchenko and that, that matchup against Nunez is, is at least a year away, but um, just stylistically, considering that home is a 19-time uh, boxing champion, uh, do you guys think she could hang with Nunez and get the better of her and, uh, and maybe even knock her out or, or out-jab her? That's the first question. And the second question is, how do you guys think um, uh, Garbrandt would do against McGregor at a catchweight possible super fight? Hmm. Well, to answer your first question, Mm -hmm. you know, pick and choose her shots, move around, kind of almost like a TJ Dillashaw type of Mm -hmm. uh, movement. But the thing is with Amanda, she'll close the distance on Holly. She's not afraid of locking up with her. So I don't think Holly can avoid her too long. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would go well for her. And then as far as the super fight, I just don't think 
that Connor has any interest in going that low anymore. Who's super, who's the super fight question for? Cody and uh, Connor. Co yeah, no, yeah. Because Cody would have to jump pretty high. Right. So I think Connor's a 55 right now. So Cody would have to say, well, I'll meet you at 45. Not that, say, Cody's scared of anyone on the streets. He'd probably, probably fight anyone. But it, it's two divisions away, and I just feel like he's way back in the pecking order. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Nate Diaz, Habib are bigger fights right now, and then maybe Tyrone Woodley, except Tyrone Woodley may be looking to go up and fight Bisping. I don't know. We'll talk about all that as well. But the other question is, I do have an opinion on this. Home, respected boxer for sure. You said it, a Alex, multiple-time world champion. But against Shevchenko, I rewatched that fight yesterday. She just didn't make the adjustments. Shevchenko outstruck her. Uh, of the two, I think Amanda's tougher on the ground. So if the fight visits the ground, I think Amanda has an advantage there. But I just think Amanda seems to hit a little bit harder with her fists, and she's pinpoint. And when Holly was getting dotted up by Valentina, she just didn't really seem to have answers to that. And if, if, if Amanda's aggressive and hits her, she may actually even finish her, man. I don't know. Holly has been finished before. Um, but but it was it was Holly's reluctance or I don't know. She just didn't seem to adapt for over five rounds to what Valentina was doing, which was countering her with that dip and then the, the hook, you know, the right hook because she's a lefty. So um, – I, I would favor Amanda right now in that matchup. The, the, the other question I have, and I'll, I'll ask Alex and Goes and anybody else that wants to answer, what about Nunes and Cyborg? I know they're both mm. Brazilian, and, yeah, some Brazilians don't fight each other, but that question popped up a little bit. I mean, is Nunes that uh, out of the realm of of, of, uh, of fighting someone like Cyborg and how she may do? Cause at 45 boy, or catch? Uh, I think, yeah, that's just for the sake of safety. No, you know what? I, it sounds like Cyborg's just not going to do 40 anymore. So 45. So it's got to happen at 45, but that might be intriguing, right? You know what? Give me Amanda in that fight. I'm telling I you, yeah. I think she's a more complete fighter. She, 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 um, I think she's, she's got a chance. Gun to the head, I think I may still go with the bigger gal, but I, I don't think it's as crazy as people think. How about you, Alex? Um, I think it's a fascinating matchup. I actually didn't even think about that, which is crazy, because um, Nunes has made me forget about uh, Cyborg, but I would say that um, Cyborg, to me, with the sort of juiced-up body, still looks stiff. And, um, and I can't imagine, um, like, I would think that Nunez is the more uh, fluid fighter, and she would, her shots would get in. She would have an easier time connecting. And everybody says that Nunez hits like a guy. So I would think she would just have to connect once or twice, and Cyborg would fall from grace. Like, she wouldn't be this invincible juggernaut um, anymore. She would get tagged and her reputation would vanish in uh in one in one shot so i would take nunez there all right buddy thanks for calling in thank you see ya. that might be the question for tomorrow who do you think wins nunez or cyborg i bet you it may be closer to 50 50 than people think yeah before the fight i, I think people would have said oh cyborg all day or at least eight out of ten but after what she did to ronda how accurate she was i mean and and now looking back to what she did against Misha, you look back at all those sequences. I mean, she is accurate. Great word by Alex. Fluid, loose, you know, with the strikes. Like, they just come off like, bam. I mean, the one thing I was going to say, so one of the callers was talking about Ronda and her style, and, and I thought what he was going to get at, and I was about to jump in. I didn't want to interrupt, but what Ronda looks like is she's stiff mm -hmm. out there, you know. So Ronda's got muscle. She's strong. And she, when, when she whips those arms around or when she hits pads, you can tell, oh, my God, that, that would not feel good. Except once she gets in there, she's so tense and stiff. I, I just believe that she's not as uh, threatening as, of a striker as the other gals that I think are just a little bit more loose and just bam, bam. Oh, and she's and, just and hands, too. She never throws kicks or right, anything Right, she's not like putting that. everything behind it. Exactly. Uh, let's talk to Rodney in San Antonio. What's up, Rodney? Happy New Year, boys. You too, man. Same to you. I'm sure you had a similar experience on Saturday morning. I was so surprised to see how many of my friends and family and, and perfect strangers on social media were MMA experts. I had no idea that there were so many out there. It was incredible. Um, so I went in hard on them, and I said, look, I didn't see any of y'all uh, talking about how terrible Betch Cohea's striking looked when she got torched in 34 seconds, just saying that she should hang it up. 
her striking is awful. She sucks. She's this, she's that. She should die. Um, nor did anyone say that Kat Zingano has white belt jiu-jitsu when she got torched in 16 seconds. On and on and on. So my thing is this, fellas, and I want to know what you think. I think if Ronda wants to, and that's the big if, but if she wants to, I think if you look at the top ten as it stands, I think that she could still be competitive with the right camp. Um, I think that she matches up very well with Rocky uh, Pennington and, and Juliana Pena because both of them are very clinch-heavy, very sloppy. And, and, and that's not a knock on them. I mean, my, my style is very sloppy as well. I mean, I like both these gals. I think they're awesome. They're in the top five. But I think their style plays right into the hands of Ronda Rousey. If she were to transition to a super camp, work on the things that she needs a lot of work on, her footwork, head movement, uh, her, her double legs, her defense, all of these things, ultimately her striking, I think that she could eventually be competitive and rematch home or possibly even Nunes. Um, but she definitely needs a couple more fights um, to warm up to that, to get that tension out of her movement, like you said. What do y'all think? That, I thought that should have happened even before this fight. Right. They should have gave her a matchup to bring her back down from where she was, right? Somebody like like the, the gals that you just mentioned, something. And I don't want to call them tune-up fights because a lot of those girls are very competitive. Those are tough, tough girls. But to just throw her right to the wolves again like that, um, I, I didn't agree with that. I, I think you have to get your fighter's state of mind back level. Again. And as far as super camp, I don't know that she'll ever do that. I mean, props to Joanna for leaving everything in Poland, going into a American top team and going – I hope you guys will welcome me here. I am a champ, but I know you have Jessica Aguilar and Tisha Torres and Amanda Nunes and Nina Ansaroff, and hopefully they take me in. I don't know, but she she did it. Not too many people will do that, you know, go to a camp and just say, I guess we're starting over or whatever, but she did it. But I had heard she was working with Ricky Lindell, but there was no presence of Ricky that I could see mm -hmm. uh, in that corner. So I don't know if that was just polishing things up, but – uh, you're right, Rodney. Someone has to take the lead on if she's going to do this, improving other skills, changing up, you know, game planning better. Um, I, I would almost like to see something from what I see out of Chael Sonnen. When Chael Sonnen comes out, he waits no longer than maybe 15 seconds and one takedown attempt's already been uh, attempted or completed mm -hmm. because he knows his strengths. But his you know? can come from anywhere. That's the thing. He shoots. Right. Hers, she's got a practically Frankenstein to get in there close because that's where she possibly but at the same she time are there, that wrestling. are there that many athletic women maybe Amanda and a few others that have just beautiful sprawls or the ability to, to move I mean I don't Valentina's know Valentina's got good movement well yeah yeah there are some but like Rodney said there are some matchups out there that yeah. might work for her where I think she can get them down they're a little bit more stiff or you know they stand up or I would say like they, a, don't, they don't move back as quickly maybe a Sarah McMahon rematch or someone like that yeah yeah I, I think she still has Three fights in her, and it'd be nice to see her go 2-0 and with improvement and then maybe go for a world title. But her ego's huge. The UFC pays her a lot. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if she just feels like I, I'm just above that and, and I'm, I'm done. Who knows? And they've said that if she fights again, that this was kind of like a little bit of a pass. No media, that sort of thing. She She'll can't do have that to again. answer that. Yeah, that's why, yeah, it's, uh, it's highly unlikely I think we'll see her again. Ain't that right, Fantastic Rodney? Fantastic voice, gentlemen. Thanks so much for taking the call. Okay, man. See you, buddy. Thanks. I hope Rodney comes out for the junkie gathering. That would be nice. Uh, what did you think? Well, for one... What did you what, after seeing that that place sold out? Remember we said there was really no buzz, mm -hmm. but yet somehow that place sold out. What do you think the final tally was for pay per views? If she averages a million, you think it was five hundred? No, it was more than that. I would say eight to nine. Yeah. But if she but averages a million, I will say this: I am terrible at this game. Yeah. I uh, uh what the new management they pulled it off. I heard there wasn't as many comps. I heard their own fighters don't get tickets like they used to. The major star did no media, but yet somehow that was the biggest audience for combat sports, including Floyd. To be fair, Floyd fights at MGM, so there's a capacity. But this new arena that which opened about 
six, seven months ago, it's got a bigger capacity, and they filled it up. It wasn't the highest gate. Ticket prices were a little bit lower than the Connor fights, than the Floyd fights. But uh, it did have the most people in an arena to watch combat sports. I mean, if you want to put it up against boxing, maybe you could say uh, Canelo and Khan, right? That Wasn't that there at T-Mobile? I don't remember, was it? I believe was it, it sold was. out? Um, no, I'm saying, yeah, as far as beating them out with standing room and all that. Mm -hmm. so Yeah, there's only deal, six dude. months history there, so it's not like we're saying, wow, you know, this happened. But but still, I, I couldn't believe it when I heard, oh, there's 40 or 60 standing room only. That's it. We're sold out. I was like, wow, I really thought there was going to be maybe two-thirds of the arena and people would criticize the date they chose. Showtime was there, and he was saying that when she lost that fight, it was a funeral. Like, it, it was, you, you could hear a pin drop. Really? The whole place Were people deflated. really crying Showtime? Yeah? You want to come yeah. in and hug Coast for a second? This is Showtime from Tennessee. He's coming up right now. Penn State, enjoy the couple hours you have left before you're a defeated team. You're going <laughs> to get gobbled up as well. I heard they have a great quarterback, go, 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 go. but Sam Darnold is, is the truth. And I don't know that they can contend with West Coast speed. Watch what USC does to uh, Penn State goes. Ohio State, they got slaughtered, didn't they? I mean, absolutely thumped by Clemson. Alabama, they dispatched of their opponent as well, uh, rather handily. Washington from the, the Pac-12. They may be on a whole other level. I don't know, but I, I think That's Clemson a has a team, man. I think Clemson has a shot. This is Showtime from Tennessee. What's up, Showtime? What's going on, fellas? Not much in you. Just chilling, just chilling, enjoying Vegas. Yeah, as I always love it. Um, who were you rooting for, Rousey or Nunez? I was with Nunez. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, it was the it was a lady behind us that was basically saying no, 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 no. They literally sat so there like the for opposite like, of Diego Sanchez. Yeah, <laughs> sat there for like five minutes. Seriously, I mean, with their mouths wide open, and it was a few, you know, some Brazilians that were screaming, but everybody else was just sitting there. I mean, seriously, we sat there too, just for five minutes. Didn't nobody get up. I mean, you were know, people, most were people the, crying like Dana said? Yeah, there was some people behind us like, no, no. I mean, then some people just didn't know what to say. Yeah. They couldn't believe it because the crowd was so pro Ronda. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Ronda came out, when they popped her up on the screen, when she was coming out the tunnel, they were just going crazy. Then when Amanda came out, they were booing. Hmm. But when she stopped Ronda and she put her finger in front of her face to cry at the crowd, that's – and. It's, Funny thing about it, I videoed all of it. It was like seven minutes from Ronda running out to Amanda coming out to them coming in, you know, meeting in the middle of the ring and all that. It was about seven minutes of footage. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was it was amazing. I mean, some people say that Herb should have gave him a little bit more time. Oh, hell no. I heard that, too. Yeah. I heard that, too. And yeah. I think at that point they really just want someone removed from consciousness. Exactly. Laying on the canvas. You ever see uh, that show? What's that? What's that um, sport in Olympics? Curling, right? Where the one guy with the brooms guides. What is it like a, a big puck? It looks like yeah, something like that. Yeah, when they fan it a little, little thing. And yeah, and the other guys are just like sh 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 yeah. sh trying to like usher. What do we call it? The puck or the disc or something? Call it the puck. The hoof. Anyway, um, I, I feel like some fans want a fighter to be so laid out that guys have to pick her up with like a big human spatula and lift her or him. It can't be that way. Yeah. But but there is a what longer leash in the title fight. You got to yeah. agree with that, I right? thought Herb was spot on. And I'm yeah. one of the guys that loves a longer leash. Yeah, you Let him fight, you know. Except as the fight's happening, he's acquiring data. Amanda's giving him data. Boom, boom, hit her. Boom, boom. You can hear Joe. She's hurt. He's got a great C2, by the way. Boom, boom, boom. You know, a couple more exchanges. The other one's flailing unsuccessfully, you know. And the other one's staggering. Knees are buckling. That's info. Boom, boom. There's that one sequence that looked a little bit better than it really was. But I'm telling you, towards the end, it was boom, boom. You could see replays where eyes roll back. Yeah. Fighters falling, you know. I mean, yeah. there is a point where they're not intelligently defending themselves on the feet as well, not just on the ground. So I thought Herb had enough data to go, that's it, man. We're good. She's done. She really, really is done. Have we seen Congo and Barry's probably as bad as it's ever as, – as one of the worst I've ever seen. Frankie against Gray was as bad as, his, you know, and, and but, you know, we're not always going to be able to duplicate that. I, I uh, thought along the way, 
Herb had enough to, to, to make his decision and say, no, no, what I just saw right there, we're good. Because Amanda, I'm telling you, if he doesn't do it, there was a few more punches coming to a, a defenseless fighter because the hands yeah. were down. She was falling. Come on now, guys. I mean, seriously, I'm not saying yeah. you guys. I'm saying anybody else that thought they wanted more out of that. Wow. I mean, literally, you must want the Lions to come out of the – the octagon floor as well, well and finish them, them and the thumbs down. I don't know. That, yeah, yeah, you're right. One line came out. but uh, I thought it would have been interesting if it did go a little bit because it looked like she was on her way down. And when she went goes down, it's a different fight, right? Because what happens now? Does Amanda engage her on the ground or does she do the stand up? I don't know. Maybe she recovers a little bit on the ground. Who knows? But I thought her played it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I agree with you, George, when – I thought she should have shot for a double when she had her on the fence the first time when Ronda tried to clinch. But that, that goes back to, you, to us hearing that she doesn't train a lot of wrestling. I mean, she that said she had even time. trained judo for a year, I think, prior yeah. to the Holly Holm fight. She just didn't. She was just that, immersed in boxing. That's, that was a perfect time to shoot for a double. I mean, you know, just to slow the pace up. Of, of that that hectic because why you try to stand up and fight basically a boxer and that's pretty much i mean amanda's hand speed is vicious i mean i don't even know anybody that could pretty much match the speed and power that she has so that game plan was flawed i mean just off the rip mm. it was flawed i mean she should have shot for a double and made it go to the ground i don't know if it would have been any better because isn't amanda a black belt on the ground as well. She's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah. uh, or a brown belt, and she also trains in judo. I think yeah. maybe black and brown or just well-versed in both. Yeah. Not to the level, for mm -hmm. sure, of, of uh, Rousey in judo, yeah. but it, it seems like at a higher level in uh, ju jiu-jitsu. That, that being said, I've also seen her not look that great on the ground, yeah, but exactly. this is like four or five fights ago. What was it Cat? I forget. Cat's in Ghana. Yeah, where you're like, whoa, okay, you're not <laughs> – you're not <laughs> – are you sure you're a black belt? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But um, t just they got to start from scratch. If she's going to continue fighting, they got to say, let's let's work on your wrestling. Yeah. Let's, let's, your your strength is um, the arm bar, submissions. Let's get you in those positions. Yeah. You know, and, and to do that, wrestle. And she's a strong girl. That's the thing about it. Ronda is physically strong. Very strong. She's, dude. I mean, she just looks slow. I mean, far as trying to stand there and strike, slow and flat-footed. So, they got to develop some other kind of game plan for her. I mean, uh, but I think we talked about this, you know, b when they first announced this fight, before she even came back on here, that they needed to give her a tune-up fight. I didn't think that they needed to give her a title shot just, just to build her confidence up. Mm -hmm. I even said somebody out the top ten just to, you know, let her get back in there and get her confidence because confidence plays uh, – she's still doubting herself. Mm -hmm. and she didn't, she didn't get a chance to get any confidence. From the first 10 seconds of that fight, she didn't have any confidence. She's in a special place right now because it takes a special type of fighter to come back from this. And I'll give you a good example of one, Conor McGregor. What happened yeah. when he lost? He turned everything around, focus, right? Right. No now more touch at, butt in the park. He yeah. imported a high-level grappler. Now you're looking at Ronda Rousey, who just made a lot of money. We're hearing $3 million, but Plus there's more the money yeah. that comes with that, okay? Now, are you going to take a person that just got that much coin and tell them, you know, we hear about, like, Tyron Woodley back at the gym on Monday, mm -hmm. right? Is she going to be back in the gym on Monday? Probably not, right? I wouldn't if I had that much money. And, like you said, you almost have to reinvent everything. That is a lot of work to get yourself back up to the top when you make the, uh, that much money and you make pretty good coin just appearances and, and going and acting. I don't know if she's got it in her, dude, to do that. Me neither. She has said, I was born to be a fighter, and that's why I thought she's going to be back for a couple fights, not just this one. But this one ended so bad, I just don't know how fractured her psyche is now. Are we starting over again? Does it take another year? But um, I'll tell you this much. If she says, George, what do I do? I'd say, for one, take some time off. Uh, address the losses, the loss, the losses head on. And... Talk to the promotion and see if, if maybe there's three names, you know, that, that they can give you. Or maybe you go out of your way to call out somebody and suck up that suck up your, your ego a little bit. Be humble and, and just say, I'm, I'm, you know, that's the champion now and, and I'm going to work my way back there. And, and, and maybe look for matchups that make sense uh, for right. you to, to come back, you know. And even if you come back and maybe win, but it's just not there, or you don't want it anymore, then maybe go out on a win. She just – I don't – I'd really – didn't want to see her go out on a loss, honestly. It's got to yeah. come from her, though. That's the thing. It, you know what really made me sad? 
when Misha Tate lost to Raquel Pennington and she was standing and she said, I just don't want to do this anymore. Mm. It just seemed like someone, you could tell when somebody doesn't want to be there, this is a dangerous sport to do that in. Mm. You have to want to be there. Otherwise, you can get hurt. And for Ronda Rousey, man, she's just really, you got, you're either, you're either, uh, what, how's the saying go? You're either uh, live the fight for a living or you live the fight, mm -hmm. right? So you got to figure out what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take this break. When we come back, we'll have a couple guests coming your way. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. It is January 2nd. We wish you a happy new year. This is a live show. And like we said last week, we'll be here for uh, for you all week. So join on join in on the party as well at 866-522-2846 or comment on Facebook. I'm taking a peek from time to time. We'll be right back. So much. Let's lie. Get ready to be schooled by two guys who live in MMA detention. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. Uh, I'm confused here what we're doing because I'm doing a bunch of stuff. We got Ray Borg coming up. You want to stick around and co-host? Yeah. yeah, you're good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, cool. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio live from the Racing Sportsbook here at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino where elegance and excitement meet on the Las Vegas Strip. 877-632-7000 for room reservations. Or follow them on their social media fronts of Facebook.com, Instagram.com, and Twitter.com forward slash Mandalay Bay. If you're in town, 
let us know. We'll do our best to have an MMA superstar here for you to meet. For example, today we have Kevin. Oh, no, Kevin Distas. No. Kevin Lee is not here. Wah, wah. He was here for Showtime to meet. Yeah. And it didn't work out. Sorry about that, Showtime. Also, stop on by and pay us a visit. Um, you know, we'd love to have you. There's plenty of room here. There's a lot of cold water in this fridge and drinks that you can order from the bar. And by the way, if you ever visit, maybe clean up after yourselves. It was a fucking disaster here the other day, goes. On uh, Friday? We, yeah, we had all these people and everything was great. And we've done that before. But everyone usually kind of cleans up after themselves. So as I was leaving, I was like turning off the lights. I started looking around. I go, what the? I literally picked up about 20 drinks. Jesus. Empty bottles just everywhere. I don't know what happened. I guess it was a frat party or something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I would say, God damn, everybody, at least pick up a little bit after yourselves. It was a mess, dude. It was stuck. Look at that. There's a bottle right there. I can see a bottle right there. That's probably me. Well, maybe it was you. I don't know. <laughs> but I've never seen it that bad. The junkies are very polite. They come in. They do their thing. But uh, it was a fucking mess, dude. Napkins. Ugh. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I love the bus balls anyway. Ray Borg. I told you guys, man, this is the type of guy that if he gets you down, he suffocates you. He did that to Gianni Herrera. And I knew that Lewis had to have takedown wrestling because if he didn't, this cat is going to maul you. He's got... Kind of like a little bit of that uh, Habib in him, you know? He wins every scramble. And he does, man. He's very, very fast. Light on his feet when he's on the ground, taking your back. Uh, amazing cardio. Just just pushes it, pushes it, pushes it. He got the win. Uh, he joins us now on MMA Junkie Radio. What's up, Ray Borg? How you doing? Good, man. Good. Just, uh, just relaxing, enjoying some coffee. Seriously, man, that was a, a great performance he put on on Friday night against a tough fighter in Smolka. Smolka, he's been on our show a few times, and uh, he really, really wanted this one back. He, he, you know, he lost to Brandon Marino. He didn't throw any shade on Marino's win. He gave him his respect, but he, I think he, what he thought was, I'm going to get in there with another top guy and, and get back in that win column. It didn't work out for him, man. He kind of had no answer to your, uh, your grappling game. Yeah, you know, it was a uh, it was a good fight. You know, I I, I really wish I could have gotten the the finish, but um, more than anything, I got the win, and I knew I had to go in there and uh, look look good and look impressive and make a statement. You know, primarily just because of the the rocky year that I've had, and not only that, you know, missing weight. I knew, you know, if it, with 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 that with that going on, I had to go in there and you know impress everybody with a with a good win. Well, you definitely did that. And, yes, we will say that, you know, it's unfortunate you didn't make weight. Um, but an agreement was made. You, you, uh, you gave part of your purse up. And, and that, after that, the only thing you could control was the fight. And once you got there, you delivered. But let, let's go back a little bit. If you want to address anything about the weight cut, maybe now's the time. Just let me keep it simple. What went wrong, Ray Borg? You know what, man? Uh, God, it, it, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm getting slammed on the Internet for missing weight for the second time, which, you know, it, it, it does suck, and it's unfortunate. I missed weight by, you know, a good amount this time, but I, I did everything, man. Like, you know, people, people, the casual fans and everything, they don't understand what a weight cut's like. You know, they, they've been trying to lose the same five pounds for three years. Mm-hmm. They don't understand what it's like to cut weight. But, you know, uh, what, 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 when, what, went wrong i guess is um i it's and and this is more of a, a longevity thing that i'm already working on fixing i've talked to you know a bunch of people you know i've, I've, I've talked to some people before i left vegas you know i i had such this i was always having these long layoffs in between my fights like since i made my debut my fights have been for the most part five to six months in between and mentally i start to get it in my head like okay i'm not even going to fight for another month so it, I, I start to fall off the wagon as far as my eating control. And, you know, and this is something, I'm a realist. I'm going to be real with myself. I know the mistakes, you know, if, if you can identify your mistakes, you can fix them. Mm-hmm. And I know that I, I, you know, I wasn't that great at my off-season eating. Mm-hmm. It's something I'm working on perfecting. But as far as the weight cut went, I mean, I, I worked with George Lockhart um, for this camp. And I did everything down to the tee. This is the first time in a fight camp I actually meal prepped 
I've had all my meals prepped, ready to go. I did everything down to a T. I hit like a strong wall on my weight like three weeks out, and it was, you know, I, I was stuck like at that 140 range for like three weeks. I mean, and honestly, a lot of that had to do with stress. Is you know, apparently there's a lot of hormones that go into cutting weight and whatnot. And you know, I was under a, a crap load of stress here in my personal life. You know, being sued by my former coach and you know him putting it out on the public to see, you know, on the local news and everything. So man, I was just under a lot of stress. Fight and then seeing him all fight week. And, you know, I was under a lot of stress. It was a little bit hard. You know, no excuses. Uh, you know, I I did my best to. You know, I, I never stopped cutting, you know, I, uh, even though I was high in weight, I never was like, all right, that's it. I'm not going to make it any weight. I'm going to stop. I tried to the very end and, you know, I just need to, I need to make some adjustments to my, my off season life. Hey man, I'll tell you what, um, I have a feeling I'd be in that same boat. I'm there. You know what? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's nobody's for sure. I don't think anybody's going to question your work ethic once the camp starts. In fact, probably a month or two before the camp starts. It is probably that time right after a fight where you indulge, man. That's probably the toughest. You know what I mean? Because uh, think about it, man. Holidays, to, to lead a it. disciplined life for 90 days or 60 days or whatever it is, and then you let loose, and then everybody wants to be your friend and shake your hand and buy you a drink, buy you a meal. If that gets a little bit out of control, if you don't have, if you're not able to stop gap that, you know, yeah, and and that that definitely would be me. How about you, Showtime and goes? You guys would be in the same boat, I think? Oh, at, at even worse, man. Yeah. yeah. I just don't. But that's why I'm not a fighter. I just don't have that in me. Right. Mean, that's a tough situation, especially if you're doing everything you're told and it's still not working out. I mean, stress is hard to control. You don't just snap your fingers and it goes away. Gastelum was saying he just loves his Mexican food. I know Johnny Hendricks likes to go hunting and eat what he what he has. It, it's, I don't know. It, it's, it, Ray nailed it. It People, the, mo the most critical for the last three years, can't even lose five pounds. Why is that? Because you just don't have the self-containment, containment, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 like, to lock it down. That, yeah. that really is tougher than people think. But Ray, have you? I mean, it, when all this stuff goes down, has there been talks of 135? And just, what, do you think eventually maybe you'll end up there? You know what? That I. That's honestly uh, another big thing that played into my weight cut. Like, I can make the 25 pounds. I, I can. I, I know my body can. It's just now it has to be done differently. And that's another people. That's another thing that people don't take into consideration is I, got, I was in the UFC when I was 20. I'm 23 now. It's been three years or, or roughly three years. I'm still learning, man. I'm, I'm learning how to do this diet properly. I'm learning, you know, my body still at a young age. And the biggest, one of the big things is that I did everything for the most part this camp and even, you know, when I was getting ready to fight McCall, I did it the exact same way I did when I made my UFC debut. And just in those three years, my body is starting to change a little bit, not to the point where I can't make the 25-pound limit, but my body is starting to change as I get older. So it just I just know now after talking to, you know, um, some people are perfecting athletes, you know, who work with Dillashaw, I have to do things differently to approach my weight cut, which, you know, is where it comes into, you know, staying low on weight, eating clean year-round. But, you know, I... I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be real. I can, I can make the 25 pound limit, but you know, we'll see in the future how my body starts to react. I, truthfully, I think after maybe another two years, I might move up. But you know, first things first is I have to fight Demetrius. You know, I'll, I, I'll do what I need to do in my life to make 25 pounds so I can fight Demetrius. And then once I fight Demetrius, you know, I, you know, I. I'm, I'm confident in myself that when that fight happens, I'm going to beat him, you know, and then after that, well, then we'll go from there and see whether or not I'm going to move up. But in the future, I can see it happening just because I'm still getting, still, you know, I'm still young, getting older. My body's going to start to change. So, you know, things like that. Is it all about Demetrius or is it about the belt? In other words, do you care who's at the top when you make it up there? Because I know a lot of people want to be that guy that dethrones Demetrius. The, the the belt's always, you know, the picture that's always, you know, I have tunnel vision when it comes to that belt. But for some reason, it is Demetrius. I mean, it's, I don't know if I can see anybody beating him anytime soon in the division. Like, you know, in any of the top ten guys. So I guess that's kind of why I solely, you know, I, I have my eyes on him because I do believe he'll still be champion when I get to that point. But 
you know, it is also one of those things that, uh, you know, it's because he's been the champ. He's been the only champ. He, you know, he's been on a crazy, just running through everybody in the flyweight division. So it's kind of like that thing, like, you know, it, it's all about him because of his, his reign. And uh, honestly, if he was to retire and give up the belt before I got the chance to, to fight for the title, then I don't even know if I could truly accept that belt because, you know, it, I didn't take it from DJ. But, you know, I, I see things going really well in 2017, and I think uh, I strongly think that at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be ready to, to fight for the title. Showtime from Tennessee has a question for you. What, are, what, what do you got from Showtime? You've been dying to ask him. Yeah. Uh, how's it going, right? Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty good. This is my thing. Um, I was a former college football player, and um, we played pretty much my weight then was about 185 pounds. And we would go home for the summer and come back. I would be about 195, 197 pounds and would get down, you know, once we had two a days and would pretty much maintain that weight and kind of pretty much lose it during the season. So I can see how it, how much pressure it puts on that body for you guys to have to cut that, that weight cut to make it. Uh, I mean, do you, were you feeling like feeling weak coming in, you know, towards the fight, with you know, with having to – Having that, you know, that stalwart where you couldn't get down. Um, no, I didn't really feel weak. I mean, in all reality, though, on cuts, uh, believe it or not, my successful weight cut, I have came down from like 160 pounds, and then started to work my way from there down to uh, the 125 pound limit. And during those times, my body did kind of feel feel weak. Leading up into fight week, I felt a lot of muscle fatigue, you know, and I kind of just mentally got over it during the fight. And, uh, you know, that I think that's just because, you know, I let my body get high and then bring it back down, high and then bring it back down. But for this fight, I, I honestly think because my body got stuck at that 140-pound limit, like, for, like, a good couple weeks, I think my body just kind of got adjusted to that, so to where I didn't. You know, my, my muscles, my muscles, my body was adjusted to that weight to where I, I felt fine at that weight. And, you know, I came into fight week at, at 138, so which is only a couple pounds lower than what I was stuck at. So my body still felt fine and accustomed to that weight. So, you know, leading into this fight week, I felt better than what I felt any other weight cut. Ray, if you could outline the perfect 2017, including a shot at Demetrius Johnson, who would be on that hit list? Probably, you probably want three fights per year like most fighters, right? So let me hear three names, including Demetrius. I guess two names, including Demetrius. Uh, yeah, first would be Brandon Moreno. Okay. Um, second would be Wilson Heath. And then the last one would be uh, Demetrius Johnson. Are these respectful call-outs, or you got beef with uh, Heath and Moreno? No, uh, you know, I, I don't ever have beef with anybody. I don't. I don't see how people can have beef with other fighters unless you know them personally. I mean, where I'm from, it's got to be personal to have beef. I mean, but of course, we're all fighters and we're all trying to, you know, beat the shit out of each other. So there's always <laughs> that weird kind of kind of beef going on. But, you know, Brandon Moreno is more of a thing to where because, you know, he beat Smolka, he caught Smolka in the guillotine, and then he won a split over Benoit, and people are talking about him as this, you know, as a star in the making type situation for the flyweight division. And it's almost like to me, because I've been a little bit inactive in the last 10 months that people almost forgot the kind of threat that I pose in this division. So it was more of like, all right, you know, guys kind of trying to take my thunder. So right. trying to take the spotlight from me. So I kind of want it back. So, you know, Moreno's a tough kid, you know, really, a really tough kid. I respect him and his fighting style, but, you know, I, I'm just here to take out anybody who's in my way. And then Wilson, um, you know, Wilson, just because he was scheduled to fight Demetrius, he's high up there in the rankings. And I just see that as a fight that I can, you know, be more tested. I mean, I feel like I haven't been so much tested on the ground. And, you know, I'm I'm all for when I'm challenged, man. Yeah, I even, my, even my coaches trip out because I'll be – we be, we'll be doing a mid session and I'm tired as all hell, like nearly throwing up. And I'll tell them afterwards, that's fun. And they laugh at me like, why was it fun? I was like, because I had to, you know, I had to dig deep to push through that. That kind of shit's fun for me is when I have to challenge myself. So, you know, because Wilson Heath is such a high level grappler, that'd be fun as hell for me to, to know where I stand 
compared to someone who's been doing it his whole life versus someone like me who's been doing it since they were like, you know, 13. So it's, you know, it'd be a good challenge for me and it'd be a good win to get to that title shot. I like it, man. Thanks for laying it out like that. I mean, that, that gives us fans and media something to try and make happen. Marino fought recently enough that uh, you guys have the common opponent. I, I like the Hayes call out. That's a veteran. He just he, he was given a shot earlier in the summer. didn't work out. So definitely what you're doing is as you're propping your career, you're also derailing the ones that, like you said, are trying to take your uh, spotlight. So good stuff with that, Ray. And, and again, I, I, I imagine the media and the fans won't let up until the next one. Everybody will be on the edge of their seats. So go out there, you know. Don't get don't get too fat during the uh, during your off season. Enjoy enjoy this win because it was a tough win. And then show everybody that that in 2017, you know, you're gonna make the weight and you're gonna go out there. You're gonna deliver and and, and compete for a world title. A lot of people believe in you. Uh, thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. Okay, brother. Thanks for doing the show. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Okay. Really appreciate it. Big fan. And uh, you guys have a happy new year. Thank you, Ray. Take care. We're big fans of you as well. All right, thank you. Later. That's Ray Borg, folks. Follow him on Twitter, at TazMexUFC. <laughs> I love his logo. Have you seen that one? On yeah, his Twitter cool. handle? Yeah. All right, so this next guy, he had a big weekend too. This was his first uh, UFC title holder with him uh, holding the reins there as head coach at Team Alpha Male. His name is Justin Buckholtz. He's not retired from fighting himself. He can get down... But for uh, they made a commitment himself and Danny Castillo and Chris Holdsworth to you know do a transition there over at Team Alpha Male and man they did a it, great job it, it, yeah they did a great job and I could just see how happy they were on Friday night their guy Cody Garbrandt defeated Dominic Cruz Justin now joins us on MMA Junkie Radio what's up Justin how you doing what's up man how are you guys great thank you hey congratulations on that win team garbrandt you guys are a huge part of it the coaching staff preparing your warrior to go out there and, and uh deliver he did it and you guys were a huge part of it man yeah he looked good uh i don't know no one's ever done that to cruise Cruz is man he's the goat of that division and uh for cody to take him out that dominantly just shows how good cody is did it go almost better than you planned? Because I imagine you guys had a game plan, but it was, there was some stuff that he was doing out there. Like, he was improvising, you know, and, and he looked great while he was doing it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that was exa exactly how he fought was there was stuff that we had planned throughout the fight, uh, through rounds one through five. But his improvisation, is it's amazing. And that's something that I really show these guys is, is, you know, I always give the comparison that, that they're the artists and I'm just going to give them, like, the best paint and the best brushes and the best easel. And, but they got to go out there and paint the picture, you know. We're like, uh, we'll give them those weapons. But, but you know, that pop and lock, I don't know where that came from. That was dope. <laughs> <laughs> At any point, were you either frustrated or scared that maybe he was not clowning but – but maybe straying a little bit away from the from the uh, the game plan because I imagine you put him you put someone down you go down there and you finish them but he was inviting him to get back up and uh, it was masterful don't get me wrong it was masterful but all we can do is just I guess poke holes a little bit in a masterful plan but overall is there anything you can tell him hey listen you know th this could have bit us in the ass this this may have uh, th this, this you know you could have possibly lost the title because there was maybe too much showmanship. I mean, wa watching the fight again and my initial reactions were, of course, I'm going to try to plug any holes that I see in Cody's game. And uh, there's a, a couple things that I wrote down that we're going to fix immediately. But as far as him clowning and pointing and all that, I mean, this is probably the first time I've ever cornered. I've cornered, uh, you know, a lot uh, in the UFC, a couple world title fights and whatnot. But this is the first time cornering where I've seriously kind of just sat back and enjoyed the show. And I was like, yeah, man. Like, I mean, I've never... I've never actually heckled the uh, the opponent, and at that point, <laughs> me and Danny Castillo started yelling at Cruz, you know, because Cody was just so focused, so in the zone. He was like Michelangelo out there, you know, just improv 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 improving and and uh, you know hitting a lot of moves we had worked on perfectly. You know, it was it was a seriously a masterclass performance. The head coach of Team Alpha Male joining us here on the MMA Junkie Radio Show. His name's Justin Bolkholtz. Goes, what do you have for JB? When we were watching it, we, you know, we saw him start start to kind of point and laugh and do the dancing. And at first, I was thinking, stick to the game pants. But then I started thinking, 
this may be what's putting Dominic in that position that he's right. in. Because you could almost see his face like start to crumble and break a little bit. Justin, did you feel like maybe some of that was getting to him? No, it was 100% getting to him. I mean, that was the game plan. We made Cruz come to Cody. And, and you, you step to a guy with, with hands like that, you're going to be in trouble. You know, if you, if you just come down to basics of boxing, like boxing 101, everything Cruz does is, is fundamentally incorrect. And he makes it work because MMA is this new thing that, you know, it, it's amazing in itself the amount of techniques you can use. The distance is different. The wrestling, you know, and Cruz makes it work. It's a, it's a fantastic style. But we knew if we brought it into a boxing match, uh, you know, that was going to catch up. you got to be brilliant with the fundamentals, and, and Cody is brilliant with the fundamentals. What instructions did you give him when he was on the stool at the end of round four going into round five? Uh, round four was interesting. I told him, uh, I told him, I was like, you're up four rounds. I thought we had taken every round. Uh, very rarely am I, I feel that I'm, I'm off scoring the fight from the corner, you know, but, uh, uh, I told him he was up four rounds. I told him that, uh, we had a dead man in front of us and, and we could take him out. We press it at the two and a half mark. And that if he hit, uh, Cruz had one, one or two defensive moves, and then he was getting stuck, stuck. You know, he'd be broke, broke out of his stance. And at that point, Cody could have put hands on him. But, uh, you know, he, he knew he was up four, and Cruz is, is dangerous. He threw a jump knee in, in the fifth round. And, you know, Cody just completely contained him and, and uh, you know, punked him in a way. Like, it, it, was, it was a great fifth round. What were your feelings uh, once they said and new world champion? What went through your mind? You know, this was you've been a part of, of UFC titles being one in that gym, but this is the one with you as the head coach. You're the if there was a Gatorade bucket, they would have dumped it over you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I was just really impressed with everything that Cody did. He's he's like uh, a sponge when it comes to learning tech, new techniques and and specific things we worked in camp came out in that fight and that just you know makes me so happy to see that you know uh i mean you can give the guys these weapons but it's up to them to use them and, and you know he believed believed in me believed in the system and uh you know and, and a lot of that stuff was very effective like uh the, the punch he dropped him with hard uh was the right hook from southpaw we've been calling that the coal shovel all camp because cody's dad is a coal miner uh -huh. i was like man you got to hit him with that coal shovel you'll knock him out i was calling a knockout with that punch but he dropped him with it the first really hard drop and you know, it, with that punch is amazing. Justin, who do you want next? If it was up to you, if he said, Coach, what do you think I should do? You know, uh, rematch with Cruz or, or, or the fight with Dillashaw, what would you prefer to prepare for? You know, I, I just, I've watched TJ's fight a couple of times. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of up to, up to Cody. He's the champion. Uh, he just dominated the guy who, who has a win over TJ in his, in his last outing, has a win over Uriah, uh, who's been on top for the last 10 years. And, you know, I would, I would like to see Cruz back in there. Uh, but, you know, the TJ fight, everyone's saying he deserves a shot. And that's fine with me, too, because, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can tell you what would, what would happen in that fight, but I'm, I'm not ready to tell you yet. Okay. But that's a fight we, we'd want, no problem. <laughs> All right. Hey, man. Well, listen, congratulations to you, to the Team Alpha Male, to the other coaches as well, other coaches as well, Danny and Chris. Um, amazing run there, and uh, thanks for doing the show. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks. See you, Justin. All right, folks, that's Justin Buckholtz, one of the bright minds out there, one of the young guns as far as the new coaches. You know, we're always seeing this turnover of fighters, Couture and Liddell and Tito, and they handed it to GSP and BJ and, and – and, uh, and Anderson Silva, and then, of course, they passed Ronda on the torch. Well, that's Connor. happening with the coaches, too. And this is one of the, the bright minds who's not done fighting just yet, but part of the commitment was they needed a year. It was 2016 where they didn't take any fights. Same goes for Castillo. I'm not sure if he's officially retired. And, of course, we know that Holdsworth had the, uh, the issues with the uh, concussions. But these guys decided to put everything on the, on the, off to the, the side and just coach. And how about that, capping off of 2016 with a world title? That's huge. I'm There's happy for those guys. Think about Mike Brown. Mike right? Brown. He's yeah. done a good job. He's a big there. name as well. Dean Thomas. Yeah.
Good job, Showtime. I tried to Thank throw you, you under the bus there with Ray <laughs> Borg. I said, Showtime's got a question. And I could see a little bit of panic, and you kind of bought some time with your college career. And next thing you know, he circled it in, and you delivered a question. So good job, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. You here tomorrow? Yeah, I'm here until Thursday. All right, man. Well, listen, you're more than welcome to stop by anytime and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, uh, again, tomorrow, it's just Facebook and YouTube. Join us there, facebook.com forward slash official MMA junkie and youtube.com forward slash MMA junkie video. Of course, we are on demand on SiriusXM. Just like we are on Stitcher and iTunes, so you can catch us in many ways. But as far as the live, it's just the Facebook and the YouTube. Thank you to Justin Buckholtz. Thank you to uh, Ray Borg. And uh, as far as Kevin Lee, I don't know what happened. We'll see you all tomorrow. Be champions. You'll never be the same again.